Would you mind if I traded this in? Of course, Prince Alex. Please, choose something. Alexander looks... I think I'd like the painter's brush. Very good, Prince Alex. The painter's brush it is. May your painting go well. Feel free to bring back the brush at any time. Thank you. Alexander P Alexander feels Great gods, did you see that? The man just appeared from nowhere. Perhaps he was sent by the spirits. I see no boat. He is an intruder, no matter how he got here. Grab him! Not again. Look, I'll leave. It's no problem. I think not. Let's go. Alexander is frozen at the spectacle before him. Robed figures are gathered around a bonfire. Some mystical ceremony is taking place. But as to its purpose, Alexander has no clue. We found a trespasser on the beach, Archdruid. Uh-oh. Archdruid. Now what has Alexander wandered into? This must be the foreigner we were warned about. How appropriate that he should come during our rain festival. Place him in the sacrificial cage. Wait! I must rescue the princess! There's an ancient druid saying, a man who would save others must first save himself. Alexander is pushed into the confining wicker cage. And the cage is swung out over the bonfire. Alexander starts to feel a little warm. The bottom of the cage is getting uncomfortably hot. This cage is really hot. Fire in the cage! Alexander pulls out Beauty's old slave clothes, desperate to beat out the flames. The flame is extinguished, but the clothes themselves burn to cinders. Alexander won't be able to keep the cage from igniting for long. The heat and movement must have jarred something. Something that Alexander's carrying is starting to jiggle around. Egad! Something's really percolating! The water in Alexander's lamp is hot. It's just about... boiling! Alexander feels a drop. It starts to rain. Man is a powerful nature wizard. By the sacred oak, let him down! I must apologize for our rude welcoming committee. We've been feeling inhospitable ever since the winged ones stole our sacred miniature oak tree. Besides, Wazir Al-Hazred sent a message that we were to watch out for a highly dangerous foreign assassin. I assume you are the one he meant. I'm sure I'm precisely who he meant. I assure you, I mean to harm no one, unless that person threatens the princess. I'm sorry to have disrupted your ceremony, but I'm running out of time. What is it that you seek? The Oracle on the Isle of the Sacred Mountain told me I should speak to you about the Realm of the Dead. 
She told me of two souls and unrest there that I might be able to free. Free souls in the realm of the dead? You're mad! The souls might be able to help me on my mission to save the princess. It's imperative that I do everything I can. The risks are not important. No. And yet getting yourself killed will hardly help the princess. But I will tell you what I know. Legend has it that it is the right of any human to challenge the Lord of the Dead in order to save his own life or the life of another already past. But the knowledge of how to do this was lost centuries ago. I have only heard of one who tried it. A young knight who came to the land of the Green Isles from a distant land long ago. According to the story, he was determined to challenge the Lord of the Dead for the soul of his dead lover. It is said that he tamed the Lord of the Dead's horse, a black-winged, demon-hearted beast named Nightmare. Nightmare sometimes flies to the human world to feed on certain noxious plants. Those unfortunate enough to see her are glad to escape with their very souls intact. Somehow the knight captured Nightmare and rode off on her back, supposedly to the realm of the dead. But neither the knight nor his lover ever returned. If there was a means for challenge, it was lost with the night. I see. Can you tell me anything about the Lord of the Dead? Ah, that is a blacker matter still. To the Druids, he is Samhain, Lord of Coldness and Despair. Samhain was once a man like you or I, but he insulted the gods and was sentenced to rule the underworld. Immortal he is and mateless. Robbed of sleep, robbed of movement, robbed of companionship. It is said that he hates all mortals even more for the mortality that he lost. That is all I know. Interesting. I shall remember. Now look how the oak embers of our bonfire still glow hot despite the rain. If you're bent on your course, you'll need courage that's just as impervious to the chill. <sighs> May your luck last longer than your storm, brave one. May it indeed. Thank you, Archdruid. The embers from the bonfire are still smoldering despite the rain. Alexander scoops up some of the red-hot embers in the ancient human skull. Alexander is carrying a human skull filled with embers. The embers are glowing with heat. Alexander is carrying a human skull filled with embers. The embers are glowing with heat. The skull is as silent as the spoiled egg has a slightly yellowed shell that bulges in spots from the pressure of the gases inside. Alexander puts the strand of hair into the skull. Alexander cracks the spoiled egg and dumps it into the skull containing the embers and the strand of hair. The spoiled egg hisses as it makes contact with the hot embers. Zounds the steam. Phew, the smell of sulfur. This is the first page.
This is the last page. Alexander arrives at the top of the cliffs, somewhat winded after his long but uneventful climb. A mighty winged horse, the color of midnight, is feeding from the nightshade bush. The creature must be Nightmare, the one the druids spoke about. Alexander solemnly speaks the incantation over the skull. Creature of night, to me succumb. Fire and brimstone leave thee numb. Purity bind thee like a chain to do whate'er I now ordain. Nightmare flares her nostrils at the scent of the fire and brimstone. That's it? Come on! I need passage to your homeland, fiery one. Unable to resist the power of the enchanted smell, Nightmare approaches Alexander. Her eyes appear glassy and sightless. In her hypnotized state, she is unaware of the human so close to her flank, or of anything at all except that marvelous smell. Now ride! Nightmare deposits Alexander on a strange, cold world. And some of the inhabitants don't look too friendly. Restless spirits are bound to the surface of the underworld. Chained by earthly cares, they are unable to go below. These two spirits wander together. The spirit of a beautiful and noble-looking woman floats silently alongside that of a desperate-looking man. Who are you, grieving spirits? I am Queen Ilaria of the land of the Green Isles, and this beloved spirit is my husband, King Califam. We were murdered in our beds by our trusted wizier. Like a viper, he snuck in during the night and stabbed us in our sleep. Now my husband's soul is broken, and he will not speak. Then you are the ones I seek. Are you not the parents of Princess Cosima? Our daughter! Have you news of the princess? I know that she is alive and safely back in her kingdom after being rescued from Mordak. But I'm afraid I have not personally seen her. Alhazred is keeping her in her room in mourning for you. I am glad to hear of her return, but she will not be safe alone with that devil. Oh, that we could be there to protect her. Kasima, how I fail thee. My poor husband will never rest while our murder goes unavenged and our daughter is in danger. I came to take you back with me. Your people are still loyal to you. They need to know about the Wazir. Kasima needs you too. But this is the realm of the dead. We cannot leave it. Nor for that matter can you. The only one who might be able to return us all to the land of the living is the Lord of the Dead. But he would never help us. He has no mercy. I might be able to convince him. I must try. Then take this. It is my ticket to the underworld. There you will find the Lord of the Dead. I cannot use the ticket as long as I'm chained here. And if we cannot be avenged, I will never be unchained. Thank you. Perhaps it will save us all. Be careful, young man. If you can ease my husband's torment and help our daughter, we will be most grateful. I will do my best. Goodbye, Queen Alaria. Uh-oh. 
one of the wandering ghouls brushes up against Alexander. The touch of the putrid flesh dissolves the living matter like acid. Tickets up! Next! Alexander's mother always told him to avoid bad ghouls. The spirit of a woman hangs like a puff of smoke in the air. She is weeping and appears to be very distressed about something. Why do you not rest, sad spirit? Rest? I cannot rest. My son is lost. Lost? You mean in this realm? No. His spirit is stuck in the land of the living. Probably looking for me, but I cannot leave to go show him the way. My poor Ali. Is there anything I can do? Take this handkerchief. If you get back to the land of the living and find him, tell him that his mother is waiting for him here. By this kiss, he'll be able to find his way to the realm of the dead. I'll do my best to find him. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my Ali! The skeleton to the left of the path hands something to the spirits that approach the underworld entrance. Take it, please. Next. A strange skeleton with a long horse-like head and ceremonial armor stands at the base of the path to the underworld. He watches over new arrivals with a discerning eye, handing tickets to the spirits desiring admittance. A large bone key ring hangs from his waist. The skeleton with the keys looks rather grave. Alexander doesn't want to touch him. Might I get one of those tickets? The skeleton with the tickets must not approve of Alexander's less than ghostly looks. He refuses to give him a pass. Alexander has the feeling that trying to physically force his way past the skeleton at the door is not a good idea. Ticket, please. Take it, please. Alexander is carrying the mother ghost's translucent handkerchief. The ghostly ticket reads, Admit One. Alexander can see his hand right through the transparent ticket. Touching the ghost handkerchief gives Alexander a strong mental impression of the mother ghost worriedly searching for her lost son. A group of large bones form an interesting arrangement to the right of the path. Two smaller bones are propped up on the ground near the larger group. Alexander picks up the two bones on the ground. Now, what do these bones remind him of? Ah, uh, yes. Now I remember. The skeletons are overcome with the musical call of the bones. They begin to jiggle, then to dance.
Alexander finishes his tune, and the skeletons resume their posts. Despite their frolic, they don't seem any friendlier. Alexander picks up the skeleton key. The skeleton key is made out of small bones. The skeleton key feels a bit bony. That object has... Alexander can see his... I have a ticket. Oh, on. Next. Apparently, Alexander's not the only one who's curious about the body on the path. A knight's remains lie abandoned on the path. The knight, like Alexander, must have been alive when he entered the underworld. But for some reason, he never reached his destination. Alexander wonders if this is the knight the druid spoke of. The knight is wearing an old, tattered ribbon. It must have once meant much to him as a sign of his lady's favor. The ribbon is so old it would crumble at Alexander's touch. The knight is wearing one black gauntlet. There appears to be some writing on the gauntlet, but Alexander can't quite make out what it says. Alexander takes the knight's black gauntlet and examines the writing on it. Flesh may cross the portal and seek its master, death. Flesh may go where death is trod and challenge, like Scheherazade, he who reigns beneath the sod to spare a mortal's breath. Zounds! That sounds serious. Unfortunately, the knight is unable to tell Alexander his secrets. Charon stands in his boat, eternal ferryman of the dead. Alexander can't quite make out what's under Charon's cowl, and he's not sure he would want to. Alexander scoops a little of the river sticks into the teacup with the swamp ooze, being careful not to get any of the black water on his skin. I must see the Lord of the Dead. Please, let me ride across the river sticks on the ferry. Charon apparently has rules as strict as those of the skeletons at the underworld's entrance. Alexander is not getting on that boat until he gives Charon the appropriate fare. Will these coins do as fare for passage? Charon accepts the fare and waves Alexander onto the boat. The large wooden gate at the end of the path is closed. The wooden gate does not look particularly conversational at the moment. Alexander reaches out to open the gate. Suddenly, the wood trembles beneath his fingertips.
What touch has awakened my sleep? I smell the blood of a mortal. Reach out thine hand again, fleshy human, that I might devour it. It has been centuries since I last ate. Despite his fear, Alexander summons his bravest voice to command the living gate. I would pass, Gate. I have business with your master. My master and thine, human. I would be pleased to introduce thee. Only step forward and thou shalt meet him shortly. No, thank you. I come to meet the Lord of the Dead with my flesh still intact. And why should I let you pass, human, when I would much rather eat you? I have been told that there is a way for humans to enter Death's realm. There must be something I can do. Some task that will allow me to pass through your doors, Gate. Hmm, I seem to recall something. A trick. Uh, perhaps, um, a test. Mm. Ah, yes. Should a human try to pass, a riddle is Gates won't to ask. <clears throat> a riddle it is, then. And if thou wouldst fail to answer Gate, his thirsty jaws will be thy fate. Agreed. Listen as though it meant thy life then, human, for it surely does. My first is foremost legally, my second circles outwardly, my third leads all in victory, my fourth twice ends a nominee, my whole is this gate's only key. My first is foremost legally. My second circles outwardly. My third leads all in victory. My fourth twice ends a nominee. My whole is this gate's only key. The answer is love. Ah, thou traitor of the mortal plane, how didst thou guess love? That riddle should never have been solved. Love is unknown in this realm. Love cannot be banished, even from this place. There are spirits still pining of it on the surface above. Still less can it be banished from my heart. Enough! Burden me not with thy poetry. Pass through, and quickly, before I change my mind. The servants of the Lord of the Dead stand silently at the head of the path to his throne. The spirits of the newly dead end their journey here, they have an audience with the Lord of the Dead, and are then immersed in the Sea of Souls. What purpose the audience serves, Alexander does not know. Excuse me, I'd like an audience, please. The shrouded guards escort Alexander to the throne of the Lord of the Dead. Why have you entered my domain, still wearing your flesh? If you are so anxious for death, you might have found it easily enough in the land of the living. But since you are here, you are most welcome to stay. Kiss my hand, and you will be one with the spirits. There will be no pain. I seek a boon, my lord. Why should 
death grant you anything, mortal? I seek a boon, my lord. Why should death... The Lord of the Dead is a huge, grotesque figure. He and his throne are one, grown together over the centuries till he can no longer move. Chains further bind him, pinning him to his endless, weighty task. If he was once human, as the druids claimed, Alexander can see no sign of it in his merciless, fathomless eyes. The gauntlet is made of black iron and has a message inscribed upon it. Flesh may... The iron gauntlet is a bit too small to fit on Alexander's arm. The gauntlet only speaks through the words inscribed on it. I did not come here to die, but to demand my right of challenge. I respectfully challenge thee, death, by throwing down this gauntlet. Man may pass the portal and seek its master, death. Man may pass where death has trod and challenge like Scheherazade, he who reigns beneath the sod to spare a mortal's breath. He has the gauntlet! Impossible. Impossible! He challenges death. Who are you to challenge death? A man of flesh is all I need to be, my lord. And what is it that you seek with this challenge? The soul of some dead maiden? I seek the souls of King Caliphim and Queen Alaria, the land of the Green Isles. You would save two human souls and emerge alive from this realm yourself? That shall be a difficult challenge indeed. The tomb does not open its doors lightly. Either all three of us leave, or none go. Very well. Then let me think of an appropriate task. Ah, yes, I have it now. Your challenge is this. For thousands of years, I have sat upon this throne. I have heard every sad tale that can be told by human lips. I have seen tragedies that ended empires, injustices that defy reason, love that would like the very stars turn cold and hard. I have seen torments that cannot possibly be born, and yet must be for centuries. This thing I have never done. I have never shed a tear. Make me cry, thou men of flesh. That is my challenge. Make death cry? Sooner could he turn sea to stone, or fire to ice. Beast's mirror consists of a piece of glass set into a decorative frame. The glass is unusually clear, and the image particularly true. Alexander examines Beast's mirror. The glass has a startling clarity, and the frame is quite beautiful. The mirror's only reflection is in its glass. If your existence has been all that you say it has, then truth alone shall be my sword. The mirror's surface swirls with darkness for a moment, then fills with images even blacker. Reflections of despair, of wailing souls, of shackles colder and more immutable than any forged by man, of a world of thirsts that can never be quenched. Alexander feels the mirror tremble in his grasp and is glad that he cannot see its face. But the Lord of the Dead is transfixed to the mirror, to the screening of his life. Things long forgotten are once more uncovered his enslavement to this throne while still a man, the years of watching misery and horror and growing ever more numb to it, 
the seep of his own humanity, the slow growth of a new thing altogether which became that which he is now. His is an existence that has no possibility of redemption, no end. The surrounding spirits draw away in pain. The truth is so sharp it stabs, so intense it sears. <gasps> Take it away. Make it stop. The mirror of truth cracks from the strain, and death sheds a single gray tear. Truth is indeed a terrible thing. I have worn this mantle for so long, I had forgotten its dreadful weight. You shall take the souls and leave as I agreed. You have been granted to stay from this inevitable reality. I almost envy you. Find the souls he has claimed, and bring them to me. King Calafim and Queen Alaria, I presume. Your hero has won you a few more years of mortality. May your souls be more prepared for their rest when you return. Thank you, my lord. I hope that they will. And you, man of flesh. My steed shall take the three of you back to the land of the living. Tell her where it is you wish to go. <coughs> Until we meet again then, I assure you, we will meet again. No offense, my lord, but I hope that will be many long years from now. It is never as long as you might wish, mortal. Now, be gone. Yes, my lord. Are you coming, Majesty? al Hazred's treachery must be handled carefully, Alexander. Alari and I must go gather our allies and form a plan. Watch over Kasima. Make sure she comes to no harm. We will return as soon as we can to take back all that has been stolen from us. I will keep her safe until your return. Thank you, son. Your love for our daughter must be deep indeed for you to have undertaken death itself for our sakes. Indeed. May we succeed in what awaits us, and live long together as a family. An old beggar is peddling his wares in the village. He offers a variety of lamps, all neatly lined up on a long pole. Good day, peddler. Good day, sir. If you would like to get one of my fine new lamps, I'll need an old lamp in trade. Isn't it a rather bad business, taking old lamps and giving new lamps in exchange? Well, there's always a chance that I'll find a genie. <laughs> if I had a genie, well, I'd be richer than a king. Besides, there's always a roaring business in antique luminaries. There's no reason to use that there. Alexander will have to deal with the lamp seller if he wants to obtain one of those new lamps. How fair you, peddler? Hey, lad, 
Have you an old lamp for me yet? There's no reason to... There's no... Re Excuse me, peddler. But I have an old lamp that might interest you. Ah, an old lamp. And what a nice traditional design, too. <laughs> Take your pick of my new lamps. Ah, a fine choice, my son. Here is your new lamp. Good day, and I thank you, sir. Good day. Drat! Another dud! The villagers bustle about their chores. They seem a busy, if somewhat subdued, lot. The man seems busy with his chores and isn't interested in Alexander. Hmm, Alexander doesn't remember that sign being on the wall before. He decides to take a closer look. It's a proclamation. It reads, Citizens Rejoice, announcing the royal wedding and coronation of Wazir Abdul al Hazred and Princess Kasima. For reasons of security, the wedding will not be open to the public. Long live the new king and queen of the land of the Green Isles. Alexander feels his stomach turn at the thought of the dread event. If he doesn't do something soon, Kasima will be another man's wife. Alexander has obtained a new lamp made of blue-colored glass with a tall, thin neck and a cork-like cap. Alexander dips the large black feather into the teacup and stirs the contents gently. To his amazement, the jet black color of the feather slowly drains from end to tip into the teacup. The teacup mixture blackens and thickens to a paint-like consistency. Alexander carefully puts it away, discarding the drained feather. Feeling artistically inspired, Alexander decides to make use of the large blank castle wall. Ah, a doorway. Just what Alexander was thinking this wall needed. Alexander would love to go through the painted door, but that wall is still quite solid. With trepidation, Alexander gathers his strength for the enchantment of the painted door. Magic paint, black as ink, bring to life what I think, make it real what I draw, according... The spell worked. The door has magically solidified. Eager to be inside the castle at last, Alexander opens the enchanted door and steps inside. The magic paint door fades back into the wall. So much for an easy exit.
Alexander decides to find out what's on the other side of that door. Prince Alexander, I can't believe it! How did you get into the castle? Well, I... Actually, it's a little hard to explain. I bet. <laughs> you run the terrible risk of being here, though. The castle is crawling with guard dogs, especially today. The Wazir will have your hide if he finds you. I know that, Jallo. But Kasima is being married today. What greater risk is there than that? Of course you're right. Young love. <laughs> I forgot what heartburn it is. But what are you supposed to do about it? I've got to try to see her. Maybe even stop the wedding. Is that all? And here I thought you would try something dangerous. <sighs> Don't worry about me, friend. Just tell me, where is Kasima? As far as I know, she's still in her bedroom upstairs. You'd never make it up there, though. The guard dogs are everywhere, and they're very loyal to the crown. Unfortunately, right now the crown means El Hazred. If we had proof of something truly a foul, the guard dogs might listen. As it is, they're your enemies, not his. I understand. I've had no lack of enemies since I got here. In fact, you'd almost think I wasn't welcome. <laughs> and they say princes have no sense of humor. <laughs> well, I can see there's no putting you off. For Cassina's sake, I wish you luck. I'll be here if there's anything you need. Thanks, Jalo. Alexander rubs the new lamp, but nothing happens. Alexander doesn't want to disturb anything in Jalo's room. I've been thinking of what you said about swapping a replica for the genie's lamp. I got this lamp from the old lamp seller in town. Do you think it will pass? Why, yes! It's an exact replica! That's amazing! How did you guess? I suppose it was intuition. Hmm. <laughs> I'll have to wait for the right moment, mind you. But I should be able to get close enough to swap this for the real thing. And none shall be the wiser. Now you shall see Jalo's skill. I'm sure your hands are mightier than my sword, my clever friend. <laughs> Go ahead and do as you've planned. And let me worry about swapping the lamp. If I accomplish the trickery, I'll manage to get the lamp to you somehow. You never fear. I have faith, Jolo. You are a true friend. Oh, shucks. I'd do anything for the princess. Alexander doesn't want to intrude on Jallo's privacy by looking through his trunk. This is not the time for napping. Alexander Mother? Mother, where are you? A spirit weeps inconsolably on the cot. The spirit appears to be the ghost of a little boy. What's the matter, little boy? Why she would just leave me here? 
I've been alone ever so long. You must be the son of the spirit I met in the realm of the dead. She gave me this handkerchief and asked me to tell you that she's waiting for you there. It's Mama's! It even smells like her. I can feel her now. I know where to go. Wait. Before you go, is there anything you can tell me about the castle? I like to play in secret places. In the basement behind the Man of Steel is a door. Nobody except me knows it's there anymore. Farewell. A brown spider peers down at the man in the cell with little interest. The cot looks uncomfortable, not to mention a little dusty. Alexander decides against taking a nap there. Alexander will need to enter the north hallway if he wants to do anything with that armor. In the corner is a suit of armor of ancient design. Its right arm beckons slightly. Alexander examines the suit of armor, but sees nothing special. Remembering what the little boy ghost said, Alexander experiments with the suit of armor. He pushes down, then pulls up on the knight's right arm. A secret passage. Alexander hears the sound of voices coming from nearby. Alexander peers through the chink in the wall. Captain, I've been hearing rumors from the guards who've been watching the princess. They say lately she's been pounding on her door and begging to be let out. Ain't none of my business, sir, but news like that is upsetting the other dogs. Ain't no guard in the castle who would willingly keep the princess anywhere she don't want to be. Hazred claims that a foreign intruder is here to assassinate her. That's why she's got to be kept under lock and key right up until the wedding. Call me an old dog that can't learn new tricks, but I say the princess should be the one given the orders. Al Hazred has been in charge for months, what with the king's death and Kasima's mourning. Tonight, the wedding will seal it, and there's nothing we can do about it. Like him or not, he's our liege. Need I remind you of your oath to the crown? Aye, we've an oath. For the sake of the princess, we'll not be forgetting it. He'd just better treat her well. Speaking of the wazir, what do you reckon he's keeping in that magical room of his? It's not a magic room. It's just the door he's enchanted somehow. I say he's still got the royal treasury in there, along with whatever else he's so eager to protect. Not even the court treasurer is allowed in there anymore. I heard him in the hall the other day. He was speaking of that door. Black magic is what I say. I heard him say, Ali, but then Bay came up and started yapping at me. Enough! It is not our place to question the practices of our liege, no matter how strange. The wedding will be starting soon. Report to the throne room when you hear the music start. Phew, that was a climb. Alexander hears the faint sound of a woman crying nearby. Alexander peers through the chinks in the wall, trying to locate the source of the crying sounds. 
Alexander's palms begin to sweat and his heart to race. It's Cosima. He's phoned her. Psst. Princess Cosima. What? Who's there? It is I, Alexander. I'm here behind this wall. My, how suave that sounds. Alexander? It really is you! Oh, I knew you were close by, but how did you get inside the castle walls? It's a long story and not important now. You did get my ring. Oh, yes. It has brought me such comfort, Alexander, to know you were close by and had not forgotten. But you shouldn't be here. You're only endangering yourself. I don't care about the danger. I would brave anything to learn. What is it? Alhazred, do you want to wed him, Cosima? Oh, please believe me when I say that I never agreed to marry that man. Even when my father trusted Abdul absolutely, I never liked him. But with mother and father gone, I'm afraid there's no stopping him. If you do not wish to marry him, Cosima, you shall not, I promise you. Only come with me now, and we shall escape. How? I cannot fit through this wall. Besides, do you think I could leave my kingdom, my people, in Abdul's hands? But Abdul would tear the castle apart if I were to disappear from my room. You shall have to do what you can to delay his plans from your end. I can't just leave you here. Alexander, do not despair for me. I have been safe in this room for nearly six months now. Abdul can be in no hurry, whatever he plans. After all, I'm to be his bride, am I not? I have been planning too, you see. I believe I can escape. If I can only get a chance to lay my hands on a weapon, there might be an opportunity in the hustle of the wedding. But I... Shh, just a moment more, then you must go. Let us not waste time with words. Please, let me just look at you, dear Alexander. Here, take this dagger. It's not much, but it might come in handy. Why, it's perfect. This is just the sort of thing I've been looking for. Thank you, Alexander. I'll keep it close and use it if I must. Alexander looks with longing at the fair Cosima. She's even more beautiful than he remembered. Alexander... Alexander stands in the secret passageway, so close yet so far from his heart's desire. Oh no! Someone's coming! The lock on Cosima's door rattles abruptly. Alexander, hurry! Step away before they see you! Alexander hears scuffling and a woman's brief cry from the other side of the wall. Then, silence. Alexander hears the sound of scratching coming from the other side of the wall. Alexander looks through the chink in the wall. Dear Shadrach, salutations from the Society of the Black Cloak, etc., etc. My long preparations are about to come to fruition. In a matter of minutes, I will wed the lovely... <laughs> Kasima. Once I've established my power and my crown, I can stage another accident. The princess has proven infuriatingly stubborn, as you know. She's becoming quite a dangerous little thorn in my side. In a way, it is a shame I have to kill her. 
She is lovely and would be amusing to keep around, but I can't risk her talking treason to one of the guards. So far, I've managed to keep her locked away, but I can't continue that forever. Well, on to it now. I'd send her to you, but as you know, I had no luck in doing so with Mordak. I close in triumph. King Abdul Alhazred. I think it's about time to see if Shamir has taken care of the wench as I asked. It's almost time for the wedding. The wazir's words fill Alexander with blazing anger and fear for Kasima's life. That blackguard! That murderous swine! He'll not have his way if I have anything to say about it. Alexander sees lots of black cloaks. There's a box of ebony on the table. Alexander opens the ebony box and looks inside. Some old ivory dice have been left in the box. There's an old bottle of black ink among the box's trinkets. A worn old brush is among the box's trinkets. Inside the ebony box is a piece of paper with the word Zebu printed on it. A canopied bed arranged with silk bedclothes and large pillows stands in one corner of the room. There doesn't seem to be anything on the bed except for a lot of silk. Alexander inserts the skeleton key in the trunk's lock and turns it. He hears a click. Alexander opens the trunk. Alexander picks up the most recent letter and examines it. The letter is addressed to Abdul Alhazred from the wizard Shadrach. It reads, Greetings to a brother of the Black Cloak. I was sorry to hear of Great Mordak's death, though he was a bit of a ninny at chess. It seems the plans for that little kingdom of yours are coming along. I must congratulate you on your handling of the king and queen. Isolating the island so that no protest could develop was another brilliant stroke. It looks like there's not much left to stand in your way. Do as I recommended with the girl, and you shall have your crown. That fiend! Alexander crawls back through... Alexander doesn't see any way of opening that door manually. Since the door on the west wall has no visible knob or handle, Alexander decides to try to open it with his voice. He composes his words carefully.
Having chosen his words, Alexander uses them to firmly address the door. The door does not respond. Since the door... Listen, door. I would have you open. Ali Zebu. It worked. Decorative shields and spears made of gold hang on the treasure room walls. Graceful urns adorn the cool treasure room. Those trunks probably contain the kingdom's treasure, once guarded so well and used so wisely by King Caliphim, now in the hands of that blackguard Al Hazred. A gracefully curled trumpet hangs on the wall. A small table graces the middle of the room. The table is covered by a velvet drapery. The initials AA are embroidered on the drapery. AA? That must stand for Abdul Al Hazred. Alexander pulls the drapery aside, curious as to what might lie underneath. On the table is a coat of arms with the head of a beast on the crest. Hmm. Beast said that his coat of arms was stolen by the druids. This must be it. On the table is a miniature oak tree. It looks very old. Hmm. That must be the sacred miniature oak that the druids thought the winged ones stole. On the table is a strange-looking stone that's giving off an odd high-pitched noise. That must be the Isle of Wonders singing stone. Didn't the queens think that the beast had stolen it? The singing stone only continues to hum and does not respond to Alexander. Alexander has no wish to steal from the treasury of the land of the Green Isles. It might be under the wazir's control now, but it still belongs to the people. On the table is a fleece made of gold. That fleece must belong to the winged ones, and they thought the Isle of Wonder had taken it. As Alexander looks at the objects on the table, he realizes the depth of the wazir's cunning. It must have been the wazir or an accomplice who stole that one thing most precious to each island and then leaked rumors that one of the other islands was responsible. What did the wazir have to gain by causing the islands to hate one another? There's nothing of interest on the... T Alexander has no wish to... Alexander has no... Alexander hears the sound of music coming from the east. It sounds somewhat classical, but... Oh no, it's wedding music! Alexander hears a door off the north hall open. Then, the sound of guard dog footsteps. The footsteps are headed this way. Alexander hears the sound of a guard's footsteps coming from the north. Wait! There are more footsteps approaching from the west. Now what? Uh-oh, a guard dog. Alexander's been seen. Hey, you! You're not allowed down here! Uh, I think I'm a little lost. I was looking for the wedding and... Arr, be quiet. The wizard told us to look out for a saboteur. My nose tells me that's you! Guards! Alexander watches helplessly as the guards descend upon him.
You'll stay in here until we find out what the Wazir wants to do with you. The guard dogs leave Alexander to his fate, locking the door noisily behind them. Alexander wonders how he'll get out of this one. Prince Alex, Gallo, what are you doing here? Never mind. Quick, before the guard dog patrol comes around again. But how did you know I was... This is no place to talk, Alexander. Just trust that I know everything that goes on in this castle. Now, be more careful. If you get caught again, I don't know if I'll be able to get you out. Alexander hears a door off the North Hall open. Then, the sound of guard dog footsteps. The footsteps are headed this way. Alexander looks cautiously around the Grand Hall, but there are no guard dogs to be seen. The wedding music is coming from behind those two large doors. Prince Alexander, here. The Wazir will have my head for allowing you within a mile of the royal wedding. Since you are of noble birth, I will give you five seconds to explain your presence here before killing you. I warn you, it had better be good. Wait! If you love your princess, you'll hear me out. The Wazir is not what he appears to be. Kasima is in terrible danger. I have proof that this is so. For your princess's sake, you must believe me! Let me see that. Saladin reads the letter, his sword point still against Alexander's throat. Alexander watches the guard dog's noble face darken with rage. Mm, this is treason. I'll have his throat. But how do I know this letter is not a forgery? You could have written this yourself. But I did not! Have you no doubts of your own about a Hazred? Don't you see? All he wants is the crown. Kasima is being coerced. We must stop the wedding. It is true. I have had my suspicions about the Wazir, especially when King Caliphim and Queen Alaria died. But I have seen Kasima with him several times. She appears to be quite happy, even enthusiastic. I don't believe she could love him if he truly were so wicked. I cannot believe for a moment that she loves that snake. A jilted lover would not believe it. But come, see for yourself. The captain of the guard leads Alexander into the throne room, where a ceremony seems to be in progress. Alexander feels his blood run cold at the sight. I, Kasima, declare Abdul al Hazred as my lawful and beloved husband and king of this realm. But, Kasima, what are you saying? Do you still claim that the princess is being forced? Perhaps it's you that's the danger, as the Wazir has said. Alexander approaches the wedding party. Prince Alexander here? This is an outrage! How dare you allow this traitor to get past you, Saladin? You stupid mutt! 
Can't you even keep the castle free of assassins during your own princess's wedding? Kill him! Kill him now! Lord Alhazred, with all due respect, you are not quite king yet. And this is a wedding ceremony, not an execution. What? How dare you contradict me, you flea-bitten mongrel! I gave a direct order. Obey me, or feel my wrath! Milady, I apologize for my behavior, but I am yours to command in all things. I wanted merely to hear your own wishes from your own lips. Tell me what it is that you wish me to do with this young man, and I will obey. Why, Captain, you heard my dear Abdul. If he wishes this atrocious young man's death, then I want nothing more than to see him get his wish. Obey thy liege now and always. As you wish, Princess. Just as Saladin prepares to run Alexander through with his sword, a shout is heard from the direction of the Grand Hall. Hold! In the name of the true king! King Caliphim and Queen Alaria burst into the throne room, looking alive and well, and full of wrath. Behind them, a line of supporters look prepared to battle, if necessary, for their beloved royal couple. Kasima, darling, are you all right? Has he hurt you? Hands off of her, you murderous goat! If I want your advice, I'll ask for it, mother. But, Caliphim, that's not Kasima. I'd know my daughter anywhere. What have you done with our daughter, you devil? The lovely image of Kasima suddenly bursts into smoke and is replaced by the Wazir's genie. Why, you, you conniving serpent! Get him, guards! Saladin, your sword! Drat it all! You may have ruined my plans, but you won't get me! Or your precious Kasima. Get them, Shamir! I command you! He's getting away! Stop him! Yes, sire! As soon as I deal with this genie! Shamir, the wazir's genie, begins to throw balls of dazzling light at the guard dogs. Alexander, be careful! Al Hazard has a sword! Shut up, wench! Shamir Shamazel! Get in here! Here I am, master! It's about time, you bumbling fool! How could you let him follow me? Well, there were the guard dogs, master, and then... Never mind! Just kill him! Kill him now! <sighs> As you wish, master. Razzle, dazzle, snap and snazzle! Alexander, I did it! I swapped the lamps! Here, quick, take it! Bless you, Jalo. I knew you could do it! Now get clear, friend! No argument there, my lord! Good luck! Alexander has the genie's lamp. Alexander rubs the lamp, but nothing happens. The genie must be out at the moment. Shamir Shamazel, hold your spells. I am your master now. I order you to go back into your lamp. How did you get my lamp? You thief! You... you... you've ruined me! My lamp! Oh, thank Balhalla! I hated working for that loathsome creature. I already feel his nastiness leaving me. How I've longed for a master like you. I 
I've got a new master! I've got a new master! So, you are a thief as well, Alexander. Stealing the lamp was very clever, I'll grant you that. But I am the master thief. Face my sword if you dare. The man left standing shall have the lamp. So shall it be, Alhazred. I don't need the genie to deal with a coward like you. Inspiration. Alexander fixes upon the only weapon in sight. Zounds! This sword must weigh a ton. <laughs> Good. Then you shall only fail sooner, my prince. So, the mouse would bite? This mouse shall bite, as you shall soon see. Or should I say, soon feel? Ha! You can barely lift that sword, my prince. Better to lay it down now. I promise to dispatch you with little pain. A tempting offer. But I think I'll wait and see what this sword can do. Suit yourself. Alexander's arms start to tremble under the effort of wielding the huge sword. His muscles are nearing exhaustion. Ha! And so it ends! Not if I can help it, you murderer! Kasima thrusts the small dagger into Alhazred's shoulder with all her might. Ah! You! You dare raise a finger to me? You will regret that, princess. That would serve no purpose. Kasima, are you all right? I'm fine, Alexander. I was just so afraid for you. There's no need to fear anymore, princess. Yes, I know. How can I ever repay you? For myself? For my kingdom? It was not in me to let harm come to you. Can you find it in you, Princess? To give me more than your gratitude? Alexander! What are you saying? I love you, Kasima. Would you ever consider... Do you think you could... Marry me? Could you ever have doubted it, my prince? Uh, ahem. Oh! Guards! Princess Kasima, are you well? I'm quite well, thank you. Please take Abdul and put him in the dungeon. See to it that he gets a doctor. Yes, Majesty. Kasima and Alexander ask Captain Saladin to perform their wedding ceremony. Saladin is honored to do so. On this historical day of great joy in the land of the Green Isles, we witness the union of Kasima, beloved princess of this realm, and Alexander, Prince of Daventry. Do you, Prince Alexander of Daventry, take Princess Kasima to be your wife, to love and to cherish for as long as you both shall live? I do. 
And do you, Princess Cosima of the land of the Green Isles, take Prince Alexander to be your husband, to love and to cherish, for as long as you both shall live? I do. Do you have a ring? I have Alexander's royal insignia ring. Very good. Please place the ring on Cosima's finger. Who gives this bride to be wed? Her mother and I willingly give our daughter's hand in wedlock. Who will speak for the groom? I will. Alexander's mother and I recognize his marriage to Princess Cosimo with glad hearts and sanction this union. Then, Alexander and Cosima, I now pronounce you man and wife. You may kiss the bride. Hooray! Congratulations, my children. I have an important question for you both. Please hear me. Yes, sire? Alexander, I welcome you into our family with open arms. I place trust in Alhazred because I so badly wanted a son and a husband for my beloved daughter. I was wrong. But you are true and good, Alexander. You have proven yourself to all my people. Thank you, sire. Olaria and I have been through much, even though we have returned to our kingdom. I do not think we are able to reign again. Will you two consider the crown? I know as king and queen, you can heal this small kingdom from all the damage that Alhazred has inflicted upon it. Oh, father! Why, I am honored. What do you think, Cosima? I love my homeland, Alexander. I would be happy to stay and serve it all my days. Father, I believe I'm needed here. Would you be very disappointed if... Son, you must follow your destiny. I do believe the land of the Green Isles needs you. You'll be a magnificent king, though dearly missed in Daventry. Then, I accept. Oh, my boy, what a man you've become, and how I will miss you. Don't worry, Mother. With Shamir's powers, we'll be able to visit often. I'm not about to forget my family. Mm, congratulations, Alexander. I'm so proud of you. Thank you, dear sister. Oh, Alexander, I'm so glad. Between the return of my beloved parents and our new reign, you've made me so happy. I'm glad I could make up for some of your suffering, my beautiful wife. Congratulations, King Alexander. When we return home to Daventry, your crew will be glad to hear that their battle at sea was worthwhile in bringing forth a new monarch. We were so worried when your men arrived home without you, son. I'm so thankful that you are safe and happy. And I am as grateful that my crew did not pay for my driven heart. You have only brought us all good fortune, sire. With Shamir saved and his power used for good, reuniting the islands will be far easier. He has already repaired the ferry. Your road will be easier now that the islands are no longer feuding. Already the wounds are starting to heal. Yes, my love. Discovering the island's stolen treasures has done more to bring peace to this land than anything else. It is now clear that Alhazred had Shamir steal each of the island's most valued treasures, then blame the thefts on others to cause the islands to hate each other. Now let us celebrate our good fortune. The evil that has plagued this land is done, and a new reign begins. Long live King Alexander and Queen Cosima! Long live King Alexander! Long live Queen Cosima! Long live the land of the Green Isles!
You seem so far away And I just need to hear your voice I just need to hear you say If you would have me go Why do you haunt 